clap your hands like this. Things change when I call you. Things change when we call you, Jesus. Things change when I call your name. Things change when we call you, Jesus. Things change when I call your name. 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 Things change
blood still washing washing all washing washing all
time, say, you are my desire. single weight, every single burden, every single thing that is holding us back at the altar today. 
we lay it at your feet and we are declaring that we are going to leave it there that it will be not something that we pick up later on we are declaring right now that we are free from the worry free from the concern free from the fear free from the doubt in the name of Jesus and father we call it done because you called it done we say that it is finished because you said it is finished we say it is so because you said it will be so and father we're going to give you praise right now for the answered prayers although they already happen as though they already moved we're going to praise you right now we're not going to wait for the check in the mail we're not even going to wait for the healing we're not going to wait we're going to give you praise right now because we know that you're in control of the beginning you're in the middle and that you're there at the end so we're going to praise you now because you're worthy lord you're worthy family I don't know about you but but I didn't come to church because I wanted to I came to church because I needed to <laughs> I didn't show up because I didn't have anything else to do I showed up today because there's something that I need from the father and I decided that there's no better place to be than with my brothers and sisters because when where's when there's faith in the room when we have unified faith we can believe to see mountains move we can see strongholds break we can say chains break. We can say generational curses. You gotta go. 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 Yeah. Hmm. Can you raise your voice right now? I want you to look at that thing that has been bothering you all week long. I want you to look at it right now. Look at it right in the eyes and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you gotta go. In the name of Jesus, you have no residence here. In the name of Jesus, you foul spirit. You have been evicted and you can never return. Generational curses. You gotta go. Sickness and disease. You gotta go. Broken hearts. Unforgiveness. You gotta go. 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 Father, right now, we pray that you will, you will release and you will lose joy. You will give us the joy back that we used to have. Father, right now, we are praying that you will lose your love, your love that surpasses all understanding. Father, right now, we are praying that you will lose your peace. You will lose your freedom. You will lose all that you have for us, Father, right now. We are declaring that we will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. One more time, let God's children say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! True God, let's put our hands together for the privilege of worshiping God in the form of our giving as you're being seated, if you can, if you can. Thank you, Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father God. Jubilee family, we are a church that believes in the power of of sowing seed. And we believe it because the assignment that I have as your pastor, for those of you who are members of Jubilee Worcester, if you're not, I'm not sure what you're doing, but that's another, I don't know. I'm not sure. This church is pretty incredible if you ask me. But one of my assignments is to have a church filled with spiritually mature people. That's part of what has been given to me in my journey as a believer. I was blessed to be a part of this church that Bishop G.A. Thompson and Pastor Yvonne started over 41 years ago. And that Pastor Matt and Pastor Mona has taken the mantle and run with. And the thing that I love about Jubilee, one of the many things, is that it's more than just a feeling. We're not trying to hype you up. We're not trying to entertain you. We are excited because God has blessed us with the opportunity to create a space for you to have an encounter with him. We believe here that a part of spiritual maturity is walking in obedience with what the Father has called for us to do. We believe that there is a power in giving. There is a power in tithing. There's a power in sacrificial gifts. There's a power in supporting what God is doing in the kingdom here on earth. And we're excited. Usually I would say something to you, like I would talk about all the incredible things that we're doing, turkey giveaways and all that good stuff. And some of you love to hear that and you're gonna sow because of all the great things that this church does. But I felt convicted over this past week because what God said to me was that I didn't ask for you to raise money. I asked for you to help my children become spiritually mature. And I don't know about you, but anybody that has children in the room, as a parent, there are things that you tell them to do because you know that it's best for them to do it. And some things as a parent, you know that you're doing that child a disservice by trying to sugarcoat something that they're going to need in order to survive later on in their life. I believe that understanding and holding on to the principle of giving is something that is not just a nice thing to do. I believe it's something that you need to do in order to continue to experience all that God has for you. Now let me say this to you, and then I'm gonna move on. I'm not telling you to give to buy a blessing. You can't buy blessings. I'm not telling you to give to buy a miracle. You can't buy miracles. I'm not telling you to give to buy salvation because you can't buy that. The reason I'm telling you to sow is because there are things that are going to be activated in your life as you walk in obedience with the Father. So that's why we are excited here at Jubilee Worcester about giving because it's a step towards spiritual maturity. There are three ways you can give online. You can give through PushPay, Glivify, or Cash App. These are all uh, the, actually, the majority of the ways we give here at this church is through uh, these three um, areas. We also uh, give through cash or check. If you're giving in one of those ways, just raise your hand and we want to give you an envelope so that we can just give you an accurate account of your giving. So if you want to give a check or through cash, just raise your hand high so that we can see you and you can sow a seed in that way. Raise your hand high. I want to. I want to also challenge you that you may be saying, Pastor Will, look, I, I, this ten percent, this tithing thing, I don't know. This is what I want to tell you. I just want you to start somewhere. Just start somewhere. Just start somewhere, and look and see what God does. Just start somewhere. Wherever God tells you to start, just start. If it's a penny, just sow that penny in faith. As you're sowing, I want you to raise your hand with the envelope or the phone or whatever device you're sewing with. 
And I'm actually going to ask everybody to raise your hand as we, as we stand in agreement. And I want you to, even if you have an imaginary seed, let's sow an imaginary seed today. Amen. A seed of faith. Father God, I thank you for giving seed to the sower. I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you, Father God, for already supplying our needs. But Lord, you loved us so much that you continue to give us a way to grow and to draw deeper into you. May this seed be an activation of something on the inside of us. May this seed activate our faith today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 Let's put our hands together one more time for the privilege of giving. Our Jubilee family, if you're here for the first time, can you just raise your hand right where you are? I see you. Just raise your hand high. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to ask you to stand up or anything like that. Just raise your hand for the first time. If you're here for the first time, can we put our hands together for our first time guests today? So on the screen, you should see a, a QR code. Um, and there's also a card being given to you. If you keep your hand raised until we, you get the card just so that we can see you, okay? Um, there's a QR code on the screen. You could take your camera out and scan that QR code. What it's gonna do is bring you to a page where we can just, you can enter your basic information and we can stay connected to you. We're not gonna harass you. I'm not gonna like be like a telemarketer and blow your phone up. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna, we, we wanna reach out to make sure that you can hear all that God is doing here at this church, amen. For those of you who don't know who I am, I am Pastor Will Bullock, the senior pastor. And we are so blessed to be here. My wife, Pastor Deborah Bullock, co-senior pastor, led us in worship today. And today is a special day, and I'll tell you why in a second. But we are blessed because you're here. We prayed you here. Over four years ago, my wife and I came out here without having anyone. We didn't bring a bunch of people with us. All we did was bring our kids in faith and a lot of prayers. Amen. And what God has done is showed us how faithful he is when you stay faithful to him. So this room is full of miracles. This room is full of, of answered prayer. This room is full of evidence that God is still moving today. Amen. So if you're looking for a church home, again, I think Jubilee Worcester is one of the most incredible churches on the planet. Not because I'm here, not because my wife is here, but because our Father is here. He's here, and he's moving today. Can you just raise your hand one more time? I just want to pray for you. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for each and every single first-time visitor. I thank you, Lord, for the blessings over their life. I pray that you will open up the door for them where the door needs to be open and close the door where the door needs to be closed. Father, I'm praying today, Lord, that they will experience you in a, new, in a brand new way. If they don't know you, I'm praying that they will know you. If they do know you, I'm praying that they will know you even better on a deeper level. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together one more time for our first time. Yes, this morning. Praise the Lord. If you can, if you can stand to your feet one more time, just stand to your feet. I want you to do me a favor. We are a church that loves family. We're all about family. So can you just get out of your seat and welcome, let's go to somebody, go to three people and say, victory looks good on you today. Victory looks good on you today.
Right family, before we get into the word, um, I want to take a moment uh, to say something that's very important. Every year this time comes up for the last three years and I haven't said anything because honestly, I'm so excited about what's happening in this church that I forget. But, but today is a special day. Today's a special day. On, 2000, on November 1st, 2020, yes, during the pandemic, um, something special happened that has set us all on a course that um, has changed all of our lives. On that day, Jubilee Worcester was born. On that day, Jubilee Worcester was born. Today is our third anniversary, y'all. We're three years old today, y'all. And guess what? It was just getting started. God's just getting started. Hey! Listen, I don't know if you realize how significant of a moment this is. I'm so glad. I didn't know you were going to be here today. Nikki, can you stand up for a second? Nikki, please stand up. So this is Nick, excuse me, Nicholson, excuse me, Nicholson. He is an incredible film director. He, you, you're going to see his name all over the place in the coming years. The reason I want him to stand is because when we first started this journey, there was no people in the room because it was in the middle of a pandemic. My first sermon was entitled Planted. And Nicholson and I literally went out onto a community garden and I set my, my podium up in the middle of a garden. And this man directed me, he filmed it, he edited it. And that was the beginning of this church. Can you put your hands together for him one more time? He has seen everything, every take, every, see y'all, it looks good online, but y'all didn't see the take one. Okay, take 315, come on Pastor Will, you can do it, you can do it. But now we're in a place where God has filled this room in a way and he's doing something so powerful. And I have to say that this is a special moment because most churches don't see it to this point. This three-year mark is significant. Whether it's in a business, whether it's in a church, whatever it is, three years is significant. And you are evidence that God is in control of all of this. Put your hands together one more time. Happy anniversary, y'all. Happy anniversary. Come and see, oh, come and see. Look what the Lord is doing in Jubilee. sit down, y'all sit down. Woo! Turn with me in your Bibles, too. <laughs> I'm excited about today because today we are going to start a new sermon series that I'm super excited about. The sermon series is one that God woke me up at four o'clock in the morning to give me and I couldn't go back to sleep. I was in my my room in my bed with my notebook and my phone just just so overwhelmed and as soon as my, I was looking at my wife waiting for her to wake up I'm like come on wake up wake up so I can tell you what's going on God is giving me this word so I'm excited if you can turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5 it will be starting at verse 27 it will be reading from verse 27 to verse 32 if you can put the text up, the title of this sermon series is Table Talk. And the word reads, after this, 
Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, this is so, this is so Jesus. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Father God, we are praying that you will speak today. I am praying that you will soften our hearts. The atmosphere has been set. The soil has been turned. We are praying that this seed, the seed of your word, will be deposited and may it produce great life. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 The title of this sermon series again is Table Talk. Table Talk. No, not red table talk. Just plain old table talk. Amen. One meal can change everything. I want to start off by asking you this simple question. Who is sitting at your table? Who is sitting at your table? We have entered into the time of year that I love more than any other time of year. And that is the month of November because of my favorite holiday. Anybody that knows me even a little bit knows that when it comes to Thanksgiving. <laughs> Pastor Will, Pastor Will loves him some Thanksgiving. Why do I love Thanksgiving? I love it for three reasons, three reasons. One is because of the food, amen. Listen, I love turkey, I love stuffing. I like the stuffing that goes in the turkey. I like the stuffing that you put in the oven. I like macaroni and cheese, not the real baked macaroni and cheese, amen. I like the collard greens and the string beans, the cranberry sauce. Look, it can be in the can, it can be homemade. I don't really care. You have to have my wife's sweet potato casserole. My God, my God. Listen, in the, listen. I gotta have the gravy and we have lamb and sometimes fried chicken. I mean, it is a time, oh, what a time. And then let's talk about dessert. Oh my goodness. My mother's apple pie with some ice cream, peach cobbler. Banana pudding, pecan pie, sweet potato pie. Listen, it's just, it's just bad, y'all. It's just, it gets bad, y'all. It gets bad. I love food, number one. Number two, I love, I love friends and family. It's an opportunity for us to get together and, and just hang out. People that you haven't seen in a while, family that lives out of town, you get to see them and fellowship with them. And number three is fellowship. Food, family, and friends, and fellowship. I love being able to come together and tell those old stories of what happened. Me and my brothers get together and we tell stories about who got in the most trouble. We say who got the most um, <sighs> spankings, amen. I was gonna say something else, but you know, sorry y'all, we live in 2023 now, you know what I'm saying? Can't say what I was gonna say. But, but, but we talk about the memories of playing outside and, and crawling across the, 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 the roof of our apartment buildings doing crazy stuff. And when we tell my mother all the things that we used to do, she's like, you did what? You, 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 you did what? I love that time of year. But can I tell you something? The reality is that for many of us, this is also a very challenging time of year. It's challenging. And, and my desire is to help you navigate some of this stuff. See, in the book of Luke, we see Jesus having 10 meals with different kinds of people. Many of us are struggling preparing for this season because we are going to be sitting at the table with people who have hurt us, people who have rejected us, people who have accused us, people who have lied to us and on us, and people who have betrayed us. But 
Can I say something to you? At that same table, there are going to be people who will also need the love that you have, the peace that you have, the joy that you have, and they will need the access to the God that you serve at that same table. My desire today is to, and throughout this next month, is to help you understand just some of the ways that Jesus navigated some difficult situations, especially when it came to being around the table with some people. I don't know about you, but there are people in my family that, that I love to see, and I gotta be honest with you, there are people in my family that are sometimes, uh, I'm like, I'm not gonna be mad if they're not there. I'm not gonna be upset if they don't come this year. Because relationship is difficult. Relationship is difficult. It's a very challenging thing to navigate. But I believe that, that at the end of this series, we are gonna realize that one meal can change everything. I wanna look at this text. So in this text, we see Jesus. Jesus at this point has already called some disciples to be with him. Um, he's already recruited a bunch of fishermen He's actually already performed some miracles. And now it says that he is walking through a town and he comes across a man by the name of Levi. And Levi was a tax collector. And he's set up his booth where on the road where Jesus was, some believe that Levi knew the road that Jesus was gonna take and he set up a booth there because he knew that a lot of people would be following Jesus. But Levi was there doing what he does. And before I get too far in this whole thing, let me explain to you a couple of things about Levi. Levi was, his name actually means to join. Levi means to join. Second thing I want to tell you about Levi is that his name being Levi, some theologians believe that he is from the tribe of the Levites. The Levites were the tribe that Jesus birthed all of the priests out of. So it's so interesting that this man, Levi, whose name meant to join, who may have been in the lineage of other priests, people who are meant to go and, and, and stand before God and the people to be, go, to be the go-between, is now somehow caught up being a tax collector. Now, some of you may not understand the big deal about being a tax collector, but I'm about to break it down for you real quick. In that society, being a tax collector was the lowest of low in the Jewish community. It was, they were, they were viewed and they were hated. They were reviled. People couldn't stand them. Why? Because what was happening was that the Romans took over. And what they would do is that they would recruit other Jews to go and be the tax collectors because they knew who had the money in their community. So what would happen is that the Romans would hire them to do this job and other Jews would look at these people saying like, you're portraying your people. How could you do this to us? And not only were they collecting taxes for, for, for the Romans, but many of them were padding their pockets. They were taking their extra money on the side. So tax collectors were literally viewed as the lowest of lows. To say they were hated was probably an understatement. Think of the kind of people in our society that are viewed in that way. Drug dealers, gang members, prostitutes. I'm not even going to, I heard you. If you didn't hear what they said, they, I'm not going to say it online. I'm not going to say it. What kind of people are viewed with that level of disdain in our communities? What people do you view that way? The lowest of the low. Here we have Jesus walking through town, coming across this man, and he says two words. That were extremely interesting. He says two words, simply, follow me. Follow me. Follow me. 
And that invitation was something that that man named Levi needed. It says that he got up, left everything, and followed Jesus. Now, this is the question that I want to present to you. Are there people in your life that are waiting for an invitation from you? How many people are actually waiting for a simple invitation? This man, his name meant to join, but he had found himself in a distant space doing something that he was not meant to be doing. But because of the invitation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it says that he got up, left everything that he knew, and followed him. Listen, many of us are here right now. We are saved today simply because of an invitation. You may have been invited to come to a prayer service by your grandmother. You may have been invited to a service because your parents wanted you to be there. Your friends wanted you to be there. You may be here right now. Because how many people in this room are here because somebody invited them? Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Somebody simply invited you, said, I heard about this church, Jubilee Worcester. You want to be there. You are here because of an invitation. Who are you inviting? Who are you looking at and coming across and saying, I have, I, I have the answer. I'm not the answer, but I know who does. Follow me. I'm going to bring you to him. Come with me on Sunday, 12 p.m. I, I want to introduce you to the man that changed my life forever. How many people are extending that invitation? Or do you prefer to sit at the table alone? It's so powerful because the text goes on to say that, that Levi was so excited that not only did he come, but he set up a banquet, a meal for Jesus, and he invited all his friends, all the other hated tax collectors, all the other people that, that no one liked, they were all at this dinner where Jesus was. Can I say this to you? That you inviting someone can lead to them inviting someone. You inviting someone over for a meal. You inviting someone over for coffee. You inviting someone to your church could lead to them inviting multiple other people. Sometimes we get caught up because we think that it's about one-on-one, -on -one, but how many times do I have to tell you that our Father does not operate in simple addition and subtraction. Our Father operates in multiplication. So all he needs is one invitation. All he needs is one yes, and he can save an entire family line through that one yes. Who is sitting at your table? Now, this story is good, right? So far, so good. But here comes the drama. <laughs> this is, listen, if you know anything about coming together for dinners and family times, and you know there's always something that's going to happen, some kind of drama that's about to go. Yet, why did you say that you know that you can't tell that story because it's going to remind her that I owe her money? <laughs> But here comes the drama. You have Jesus at this banquet with a bunch of sinners, a bunch of people that everybody hates, and, and there's a group of other people that are there as well, and they're called the Pharisees. The Pharisees are the people that were holding on to the old way, the law of Moses, and the teachers of the law were there to, to, to continue to, to make sure that that standard was being withheld and being upheld. And in the New Testament alone, the Pharisees were spoken about about 90 times. The thing about the Pharisees was that they were very conflicting people because they believed in the resurrection. They believed in spirits. They believed in angels, but they did not believe in this Jesus. They cared way more about the law of old than being open to the possibility that the answer and the fulfillment was here. 
What they didn't realize was that they were standing in front of the answer. The fulfillment of every promise. The fulfillment of every law. I want to say this to you. They were upset with Jesus and the disciples for being at this party or this dinner because there were so many other sinners there. My question was, at somebody for being at a dinner that you're at you're mad at Jesus like how dare you be here with these sinners and these people of wickedness oh, pass me that real quick sorry hold on Jesus I gotta the Pharisees were so conflicted because they're in the midst of all of the what they view as evilness themselves and they were not there testifying. They were not there doing an altar call. They were not there trying to heal people. They were one of the many of people that were viewed as wicked. Yeah. Yeah. Let me say this to you real quick. Be very leery of people who hide their faith. Be very leery of people who only are saved in this building. Be very leery of people who only get loud when they're around people who know what they know and believe what they believe. Be very leery of people who only want to read their Bible when they're in their rooms. Be very leery of people. Be very leery of people who have blasted that, that Maverick City or that Jubilee worship all down the road. But as soon as they get to the stoplight, they turn it down because they don't want to offend anybody. Be very leery of people who, who aren't proud of being a believer. This world desperately needs some loud Christians. This world has a bunch of loud, crazy people. But this world needs a world. We need some loud, radical Christians that are not ashamed of the gospel, that are willing to go where nobody else is willing to go and share the good news. That's what we need. It's too, look, I don't have time for nobody being quiet around me. This world needs your voice. This world needs the truth that God has given you. It's time to speak up. Look at the person next to you. Say, speak up. Say, speak up. Say, I can't hear you. You're too quiet. You're too quiet. Prophet Gideon would say, your clapping is sick. Your clapping is sick. The Pharisees, the Pharisees are judging Jesus and the disciples for being at this party with tax collectors and sinners. And Jesus says something that is so powerful. And this is where I just want to rest the rest of my time. He looks at these Pharisees and he says this in verse 31. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. I want to spend the rest of my time giving you these four points that you're going to need as you enter into this family time, this time eating meals with one another and being around people that, that, that you're trying to win or trying to reconcile with. Y'all ready? The first point I want to give you is to remember that you are always on assignment. You are always on assignment. When you go and you say, pass, pass that chicken, Papa, can you pass me the chicken? When you go to your grandmother's house or your aunt's or your uncle's house, when you, when you go in that room of people, some you know may be saved, some you know may be struggling, some you've never met before. Can I tell you that you are on assignment? Why do I say that? I say that because of those people in that room around that table, if you have the right kind of people around the table, you may have to understand that you are the only Jesus representative that they know. They may never come to Jubilee Worcester, Jubilee Boston, Jubilee Stoughton. They, they may never come to a life group or a Bible study. 
Their, their encounter with you may be the only encounter with someone who is saved and in their right mind that they will ever have. If you are too busy trying to be quiet and to fit in, you're going to cause for them to miss the one opportunity that they may have. You are always on assignment. What is your assignment? Your assignment is to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is your assignment. What's your purpose? Your purpose is to go. Is to go make disciples. What is a disciple? A disciple is a follower, a follower of Christ. You are called to go and make disciples. We're looking for our purpose, Father God. What did you create me for? Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. They have all these gifts, Father. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And God's sitting there like, well, if you read my word, I've already told you. I said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's very clear what you are created to do. This may be the only moment that your brother, your sister, your aunt, the weird uncle that everybody don't like hanging around that much. You may be it. Let's stop trying to fit in. Let's be loud. Let's stand out. Number one, you're on assignment. Number two, quickly, God did not send you to win the one. Put it up. God did not send you to win the one. I'll say it again. God did not send you to win somebody that has already been won. He has sent you to go to those who don't know him. He may send you into some dark places because you have the light. And light shines darkest, and light shines brightest in dark places. Why, why? God, I want to I help people know who you are, but the only time you're around anybody is when you're at church. And we already know, we already know, we got it. That's why we're here. But what about going to people who don't know? Yeah, once you, if you're, if you're not spiritually mature yet, if you're still trying to fight through some things, and no, okay, may, you, may not, you may not be ready to get into the fight, but if you've been coming to this church for longer than six months, it's time to get in. It, it's time to get started. You, you were not sent. You're not created to, to win the people who have already been won. You have been called to win the people who need God. Joseph, there are people that you know that I will never meet. There are going to be people around your dinner table that I will never come in contact with. But they know you. You have to look for the one. The one who does not know. The one who has lost their way. The one who is broken. The one who needs hope. The one who needs to understand what this life of faith is. You can be that person to win them. Number three. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions. If, I, if Jesus were sitting and he saw Levi, he could have easily made an assumption that this man was lost. This man was lost and that God, and that there was no hope for him. This man was lost and, and, and he, he, he didn't want to hear the truth. This man was lost and he had no way to, to, to get out of the hole and he had no interest in it. Can I tell you that there are people in this world that would love nothing more than to get out of the darkness that they're in. They're tired. They just don't know how to get out. Don't make assumptions that someone doesn't want it. They just don't know how to ask for it. Don't make assumptions that they don't want to be free. You think that because they smoke weed all the time that they, miss, they must want that life. No, maybe they are going through something and they're self-medicating. And the only thing that has been given to them is weed. Maybe that's the only thing that's been given to them to help deal with the hurt. 
Maybe that alcohol, maybe alcohol is the only thing that has been given to them to help them fill that void. But we know that there is something far greater. There is something far greater. And that is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is something far greater. And that is the good news, the gospel. And you have the opportunity to give that to them. Don't assume that because they're not here, they don't want to be. We have to. We have to do what Jesus did. We have to recognize that the reality is that you can see things in people that they may not be able to see yet. Jesus looked at Levi, understanding that his name meant to join. He may have been from the tribe of, of the Levites. He may have had a call to be a priest, but sin called him away. Instead of representing the king of kings, he was representing the Roman soldiers and the Roman government. But Jesus saw past where he was and who he was at that time. People may need you to look past who they are and where they are at this time. Jesus didn't come to clean the clean. He came to heal the sick. The last thing I want to give you is that God's message is for everyone who will receive it. The reason why God had an issue with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law and the Sadducees, all these different people in the Bible, was because they were walking around like they had everything together. They were the righteous people in their eyes. But can I tell you something? They were as lost as everybody else. And Jesus is saying, I didn't come to save you all. I came to save the sinners. I have called them to repent so that they can walk into this new life. You may be the only person that your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, that can help them see that they are lost but you can also be the only person that can help them see that if they follow you as you follow Christ you can put them back on the track that they were meant to be on if they just follow you if they just if they just walk with you if they just talk with you for a little bit you can take them out of that maze of darkness and bring them back into the place of his marvelous light. If they just walk with you for a little bit, if they just get around you for a little bit, that addiction that has been holding them down will be something that they can get free from. If they just walk with you for a little bit, if they just follow you as you follow Christ, they can walk into all of the purpose, all of the destiny that, 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 that they had, that God has had for them. If they just follow you for a little bit as you follow Christ, the deliverance that they need will be theirs. But you have to extend an invitation. Who is sitting at your table? Everybody stand. What I love about this story that this tax collector that we know as Levi in the book of Luke is actually the man that we all know as Matthew. This sinner, this wicked man, this thief, this robber is someone who God has used significantly to change the life of so many family I just want you to raise your hands right now because I'm not trying to do an altar call I want to I want to release you I want to release you with all of the power and authority that has been given to you by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I want to release you to begin to go out and have confidence 
when you sit around that table, I want you to be on assignment, realizing that you may be the only light that these people see. So Father, right now, I pray for each and every single person under the sound of my voice that your power and your, the authority that you have been given, that Jesus has been given, he has also given that to us. Our Father, right, our Father, I pray right now that you will begin to release them to be that voice, release them to be that light, release them to shine that love, release them to be the ones that help your sons and daughters that are lost find their way back home. Father, I am praying right now that if there is anyone who has allowed the enemy to silence them, may, they remove, may that silence be removed right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I am praying that they will begin to tell their testimony. They will share their story. They will say, look at what God has done for me. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. If he freed me, he can free you. If I have victory, you have victory. If he healed me, he can heal you. If he put my family back together, he can do the same thing for yours. May we begin to tell the stories share the testimonies of all the things that you have done and are doing Father I am praying that this will be a holiday season where we see a great revival in our families we believe it will be so in Jesus name we pray let everybody say amen amen Put your hands together. I have a couple of quick announcements. I might even have you sit down. You can, you can stand where you are. Or you can sit down. <laughs> Some people are like, I'm sitting down, Pastor. Oh, I'm sitting down. I'm sitting down. I worship for too long. I'm sitting down few announcements for you all. First of all, as a part of our anniversary, we wanted to extend an invitation to you all to have some cake with us. Um, we're in the small chapel. There's a room called the small chapel. I'm praying that we all fit in there. Amen. Um, but the, it's, where's Janae at? She's probably back there already. Um, there's a small chapel and there's, there's, we'll have somebody direct you back there, but just grab some cake. You can grab the cake and come out here in the lobby and let's fellowship. Three years is something powerful, and I'm telling you, if y'all don't know, there are so many testimonies, so many things that God has been doing, and next year, I have to tell you, like when we're, next year is going to be a year that you will not forget, I'm telling you, I can feel it. So I want to encourage you to do that, to celebrate with us. Also, I want to say this to you. If, um, actually, if you're someone who is interested in being a member of this church, getting involved in ministry, just joining the team, being get, get going deeper in your relationship with us, we have this class called Next Step. Um, it, will be, it will be meeting on Monday, November 13th at 7 p.m. through Zoom. So you can do it from your home. You can have a nice shirt up top and have pajama bottoms on the bottom. We will never know anyways. So I want you to know that this class is for you if you want to go deeper and get connected, become a member, get involved. We we believe in being a church where everybody serves we have been called to serve not just to be served but to serve this is a class for you just register at the connect desk put your name on the list there's a list out there just put your name and information and we'll send you a link and on november 13th at 7 p.m i will be teaching the class and we'll connect all right um next thing every year we do something called a turkey giveaway on Sunday, November 19th, can you put that slide up? On, su on Sunday, November 19th, we're going to be giving away turkey dinners to those who are in need. We are a church that loves to give to those who are in need. Um, so all they have to do is to go to www.jubileewooster.org slash events. Just take a picture of that. You can go on our website. You can also go on social media to the Jubilee Worcester page. Just take a picture of it. Have them sign up. You may be somebody that's in need this year. You may know someone that's in need this year. Go to this link. Sign up. Spots are limited. Sign up. And all they have to do is sign up. They'll get information. And on November 19th, after this service, they can go right outside and pick it up. And they can go home. We'll pray for them and have them go. All right? So sign up. Take advantage of that. Baby dedications on Sunday, November 19th as well. If you have a child or baby to be dedicated, we want you to... 
do that here if you would like to have that happen here just sign up at the registration table the connect table out in the lobby and um lastly i want to shout out influence 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 in the house and okay if you can go to this slide the overflow slide so on november 17th or 18th 17th November 17th, we are having our next Influence Night here. It's going to be a night of worship called The Overflow. Um, we have been blessed. Part of the call that I have and my wife have is to, is to launch a revival in college and young adults. How many people are between the age of 18 and 30 years old in the room? Raise your hand. You can look around this room. Look around this room. Listen, if you're not between those ages, you're not old. You're not old. You're not. You know, I'm, I don't fit there either. You know what I'm saying? I, I, how many people feel like they're between the ages of 18 and 30? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, so I want you to come. Hear me. Hear me. Everybody that raised their hand, hear me. Hear my heart. God has something specific for you all, your generation, and you're going to miss it if you're not here. I want you to come on November 17th. Be here. We have something special for you intimate time of worship i have a word for you that is specifically tailored for you make sure you're here amen amen 7 p.m in this room and that's it that's it let's stand to our feet were you blessed were you blessed hey 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 all right yeah we're gonna this is gonna be fun i'm gonna have to release y'all in sections to go get cake but we're gonna try this out cake will be out that way through that door and again, we'll grab the cake and come out. And I would love, I'll be standing in the lobby. I'm going to go on right to the lobby. I would love to shake your hand and just thank you so much for taking this journey with us. And we're just getting started. Amen. Um, if you have a giving envelope, please put it in the box at the Connect desk as well. It's a black box. Put it right in there. And uh, we'll see you all next Sunday as we continue Table Talk. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for being so faithful for showing up in such a powerful way. Father, I am praying, Lord, that something will shift in our lives and that we will never be the same again. Father, protect us as we go throughout these doors. Allow us to be a light in the midst of darkness and have your way in our lives until we come together again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say, Amen. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. Now let's go get some cake. <laughs>